Hello and welcome guys. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make this super adorable toolbox Father's Day card. Now, this card is one of those cards that you can fold up and you know put inside an envelope and it's going to be a 5x7. You can always write your message on the back but I thought it was super cute and I wanted to share with you on how I made it. So let's go ahead and make one. So first you are going to be needing to uh, cut the paper that you are going to be using and this is going to be cut to five and by seven and three quarters this is going to be the base of your card and you are going to be needing two of these uh, pieces of paper once you have those two cut out we are going to be doing some scoring and on the seven and three quarters inch we are going to be scoring at two inches and then at seven inches and then we're going to flip it over Either side, it doesn't matter, and we're going to be scoring at 2 inches. Repeat the same process for the second part, and now you're going to fold onto those creases on every single one of them. And you can use a bone folder to press them down if you want to, or just use your finger or the back of a pen. Once you have that ready, we're going to be cutting down those creases down to that first line um, on the 2 inch side. So the bottom three inches, that's going to be the bottom of our card. So then two inch side, we're going to cut the side of those two little strips because we are not going to be needing those. And then on the sides that you cut, cut the little flaps of what forms your box. Now, in this case, I didn't like how the, fl the front flap was hanging in front of it, uh, of the little toolbox that I had the idea to make, and I decided to cut it off. Um, ideally, you would want to leave it on these pop-up box cards because it's what's keep what keeps it closed. But I decided to cut it off. Now we're going to be cutting, um, I'm cutting a couple of strips that are about a, an inch and a half wide. And then they're going to be cut by uh, an inch and a half by six. So I am cutting these two at six inches. And then I am going to be scoring at half an inch and at five and a half. So just half an inch in between. And these are the little strips that I am going to be using for the inside of my box to make um, you know, the little layers and where my things are going to be popping out of. I'm doing two and then I'm just folding those in a zigzag uh, manner, so opposite ends. Now we are going to be putting the box together and for that I just have to add a little bit of glue to one of those little um, three and a quarter inch flaps and connect it to the opposite side. And um, you know, that's basically all you have to do, just line it up. And once I did that, uh, for this next part, you can wait until you have the box already formed and then put them inside. But I like doing it um, this way because it just makes it easier when you are putting everything together. So I am measuring just about three quarters of an inch from each uh, side of the crease. And that's where, so I can have a little bit of a guide of where I am going to be centering these little flaps. Again, because I had it on opposite ends, I am going to be adding the glue and then pressing it down. And then you can see the little flap is going to be facing um, towards me. Do the same thing to the other side. And then I fold those two little flaps. And this is the reason why I like doing it this way, because you could just add the glue to each one of the flaps, including the little crease that's going to be holding the box together. And then you close the other side onto it and it glues everything perfectly in place where it should be. So there we have our little box and I apologize for the blurriness here. I don't know what was going on with my camera, but you kind of get the idea. Now to do the little decoration or to put the tools into this toolbox, I am using this stamp set and this is a Kaiser, uh, yeah, not multi-craft um, set from, it's like a, vin I don't even know the name of it, but I just called the vintage tools. Um, this, I purchased it when, when I lived back in Vegas in one of those, um, I think it's like a dollar store and the stamp sets that they had, they were like $2, $3 and I thought it was a good deal for a stamp set. Um, you know, they're not the bestest quality, but they're pretty good. And these are, this is about the, um, one or two sets of, uh, stamps that I have that are, uh, masculine. So I decided to use this and I thought that'd be perfect. Now, the reason of the sizing of my card or why I decided to do a 5 by 7 is based on the sizing of these tools. These tools are a little bit bigger to um, to be put into a regular 5 and a quarter by um, 5 and a half by 4 and a quarter A2 standard size card. So I decided to do the 5 by 7. Besides, usually toolboxes should be big, right? So what I'm doing here, I'm just using my stamping platform to stamp them. And once I stamped them a couple of times, I can see that it's already good and I can go ahead and pull it out. 
and then to color these images or just to add a little bit of color i am going to be using my zig markers again because i use that bristol smooth and versafine ink these work perfectly with this paper in ink and i absolutely love using that and all i'm doing here is just adding a little bit of color to kind of make the tools look realistic or you know look have that look of metal using a lighter and a darker um, color and i am using the shading or where the stamping was it already includes where the shading would be so it makes it easier for me in this case so i go back and just color all of them now the reason why i decided to do some of these uh toolboxes uh, for Father's Day is because for Mother's Day I did similar boxes but I did make them the smaller A2 size and I made them look like little bouquets that are you know with flowers and stuff just make them pretty for mom for moms and that's what I used for that so I decided to make one or something similar for dance so um, here you know like I said I am just going and coloring or picking the colors that I am using to make it look as realistic now I don't want everything to be gray or be a silver color so I did decide to use this um, it's kind of like a oh I think it's called oatmeal brown to color some of the little um, screw screws and little bolts because you know that they do have those little copper ones so I thought that I could use those instead now I did decide to stamp these two um, little banners or little tags that said handmade and then the other one says premium premium quality. So I decided to print, uh, print those as well or stamp them and color them to use them on my box just to kind of give it a little bit more of that vintage look. And based on the colors that uh, the packaging had or, you know, the sample, I am still using some of that red and green to incorporate onto the card. Also because I thought it would look nice... Um, going in with the little box the little toolbox so here i am just grabbing all of those colors and again i lately i've been using my sig markers for pretty much everything and uh, yeah so if you get tired of these i apologize um another thing i did leave the coloring here so you can you know basically get an idea of how i was coloring and what i was doing um i know a few of you have asked me to do that on my videos and leave them rather than just showing you the final color project but as you can see it is very time consuming so I don't want to keep this video or make it super super long so I, I do have to speed it up at least a little bit now because I do not have coordinating dies for these I am going to be fussy cutting all of them myself so I am just you know doing the good old fuzzy coloring um, or fuzzy cutting cutting all around and I like to get it you know as close as I can again I like moving the paper rather than the scissors and anybody that does fussy cutting will tell you that uh, and you know let you know that that is the easiest way to cut things out so I do like to get you know or try to be as precise as I can when I am doing this and I am cutting them so it is going to be a little bit of a of a process here in the video but again I did speed it up now these two um, little bolts I think are called um, those were a little bit difficult so I did have to cut them as a circle now we have our little boxes here and we're going to start assembling it. now I cut these little strips ahead of time because you know I kind of wanted to save a little bit of time but um, these four strips the sizes are four and a half by I'm sorry not four and a half four and three quarters by one half inch and I have two of those those are the two little ones and then I have another one that's four and three quarters by one inch and then four and three quarters by three quarters so I just cut those to, uh, to kind of assimilate the the drawers in the toolbox and I am using uh, the scotch 3m foam tape to pop them up because I, I wanted them to have a little bit of dimension so I went ahead and did that and then also I wanted to mention that for that little strip or the silver strip, I didn't have any silver paper or cardstock, so I decided to create my own. And the way I did that is by um, just, you know, dabbing my VersaFine ink onto a great piece of paper and then I heat emboss with silver embossing powder. And you can see that on my or you can see it there on my desk that's what i used this is uh by the this is a recollections brand and it's called um it's just called silver so it was very pretty and i thought that it would work perfect just you know kind of symbolize the metal parts also i kind of had to look at my husband's toolbox so i could get an inspiration or get an idea from it to as to how they looked 
So now here it kind of was off a little bit. I tried to center them, but I decided to keep it that um, that same way anyway. And then also on one of the sides of the of the side flaps, I decided to make it look like a little pegboard. So I cut a little two. I think it's a little bit less than two inches. It's like one and three quarters by one and three quarter inch little square. And then I drew lines at about a quarter of an inch um, all across and made little squares so I could use that as a guide. And I used this little eighth of an inch punch to punch them out. And then you can already see it just looks so adorable. So I only used that little piece on this corner because like I said, I wanted to make it look like a toolbox and that could be a place where you know they can hang things not that in real life it would have it but i went ahead and did that now um that premium quality little logo i decided to put it on the um, on the other side just to kind of add a little bit of contrast and then here i am centering the handmade quality logo at the center on my first card that i show you i kind of put it like centered it onto the paper and i didn't quite like how it looked so this time i decided to um glue it up a little bit higher and then I am using some of these little uh, nuts and bolts to, um, to kind of decorate that section. And I am also going to be gluing them onto that little pegboard. Even though they don't really belong there, that's what I'm putting because those are the smaller items that I have or smaller tools. Um, the rest of them would be pretty big. Like, you know, even the little wrench, the smallest wrench is, is pretty big for that. So I decided to put those in here. And then I am also putting some of those little washers um, some of them were just stamped with the black ink and some of them I am uh, stamped and hit embossed with the silver embossing powder. But I am just tucking them in into the, each one of the little drawers. Also just to kind of um, show that they can be open or ideally that they can be open. Now to for the rest of my card, I'm not quite done yet but I wanted to add the word dad. So again because this is going to be a Father's Day card, um, I wanted to incorporate that here. And I also had my stamp set, um, this recollection stamp set, uh, handy from my last project. So I decided to use it as well. And besides, it's also because it is very easy to cut those bold letters uh, rather than trying to fussy cut itty bitty images or. So this worked out just perfect. Now I am using some clear um, acetate here and I just cut it into very thin strips so I can pop these little tools into the toolbox. And I am using my score tape to add them, just kind of fussing with it to see how I want to play with it. Now one thing that I do like to do here is kind of set them up on, the, um, on my mat facing like how the card is going to be looking so that way I can kind of get an idea of what the pattern or what it will look like. Sometimes I do take a picture of it with my phone and then I can have my phone um, as a reference on the side, but my kids were using my phone so I was not able to do it. But um, I did have the other box, um, the other card that I had made as a reference, so that's what I was doing. Just using that as a, um, as a guide of where things would go. And then you, before you press it down completely, just kind of place with the play with the placement and, you know, kind of bend, fold it over to the side um, and see what looks good. You know, just trying to divide things onto one side or the other and see where they would go. Now I'm using this little, I think these are washers. I'm not sure what these things are, but I am putting all the tiny little tools all over the place. Again, just popping them up onto that acetate. And I think that putting them on that acetate makes it uh, a little bit, gives it a little bit more of interest because they can essentially dance or move around in the box. So that works out just fine. And I like to kind of fuss with it to just kind of see how it works. And I do apologize that right now my card is, you know, you can't really see how it's ending up but it was the easiest thing that I could do to um to make it work so I could see where it was lining up but you know pretty much just kind of go with whatever placement you want if you do this now the possibilities of making little the, these little box cards are endless so you can just make anything that you want to be there's uh people that have made like fish tanks and um like a theater scene there's just so many possibilities but um, I thought this was a pretty cool idea. And this is actually 
then my very first card i made was a birthday card for my daughter and then i made the mother's day card so now i'm making these they are a lot of fun to make so i i should be making more of these but you know maybe uh, uh, eventually so here you can see how our little toolbox is already starting to look and isn't it just so adorable i think it is super super cute i do have a few of other little tools here um and i don't know what this little hammer thing is called but I'm just trying to fuss with it. Now, another option that you could do with images this large is that you could cut the images and, you know, not worry about it. But in this case, because, you know, even though you don't see them, I didn't want to do that. I thought that the um, the tools look very cool, completed, because if you look at the car from the top, you can still see them. So that was very neat. I am adding now here the rest of those little wrenches on the other side. And again, just trying to see where the placement or where they will look good there i have that and we are almost there guys so i hope that you guys are enjoying this video now um before we go so for the sentiment i did use this happy father's day and this is a stamp set from um gosh i don't have it by me but i think it is a um, hero arts sentiment that has like a bunch of different ones so this one says happy father's day and what i did i cut i cut the the stamp rather than it being a long one long stamp so I could um, stack it and then I trim a little square out of it and I use my crocodile punch uh, to punch out like a little ticket stub then pop it up but there we have them these are our two little boxes that we made now let's go ahead and make um, the back now this is red so you could you should be able to write with a black pen or sharpie but I wanted to add um, a little something that I did to the Mother's Day cards that I made as well now I'm using this tab punch uh, from your memory keepers and I decided to do a little test run first and it's a good thing that I did because I always mess it up, mess it up because I flipped the, the little tool. It has a top and bottom so I want to make sure that I do the right one and what I was doing here is I just want to put the little tab so that way the card can stay close when you put it on the back. So I just went ahead and trimmed just a tiny little sliver so that way I can have that space for that, that little tab to be inserted into because I accidentally started punching it on the wrong side. Here I go, I grabbed the, other, the right one because like I said, I started punching it on the wrong side so then I had to get the, the correct one. And this one is a little bit hard to punch. I don't know if it's my punch that just kind of doesn't work or maybe I'm, I'm missing something but it's usually pretty hard to punch it out. So there it is. Once I punch that one out too, you can see that it holds it perfectly. And I am just going to glue those on the back of the cards. And that would be complete enough my cards. Um, that would be the section where you can write your message and you have that whole section um, there to do it. And I think these little cards were um, four and a half by five and then you fold it at half. So um, you have plenty of space to room or plenty of room to write your message. But again, here we're going to add the other one. And there we are. So this completes the second video for my little mini series of Father's Day cards. Um, I know Father's Day is coming up already next week. So I better get moving on those. Not only, you know, to make videos, but because I need to make those cards for the dads in our lives. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And I'll catch you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.